I'm Holly Welch, the Environmental Program Manager for the South Carolina Forestry Commission. In this year's video, I'll be joined by Jen Howard, the Executive Director of the South Carolina Land Trust Network, Wayne Steffen, a tree farmer, retired procurement forester, and past chair of the Forestry Association of South Carolina, Brad Thompson, a tree farmer and the manager at Thompson Forest Consultants, and Jimmy Sanders, who's retired from the NRCS and is also a tree farmer. We're going to talk about conservation easements, what they are, why they're important, and how they can benefit landowners and the forest industry. As we all know, South Carolina is rapidly changing. The state's population has grown by 11% over the last 20 years and is expected to grow by 20% in the next 20 years. A recent study by Furman University projects that the state will lose 1 million acres of timberland in the next 40 years as it is converted to industrial, commercial, and residential development. That 1 million acres is an area the size of Richland, Lexington, and Calhoun counties combined. Working land conservation easements are a tool that can be used to conserve working forests and farmland and provide additional financial benefits to the landowner. I'll be honest with you, for years I was not a fan of conservation easements. I thought they were too restrictive and discouraged harvesting timber. However, over the past few years I've learned more about them, realized that my assumptions were incorrect, and have grown to appreciate the important opportunity they offer to conserve working lands in South Carolina. I hope this video will still provide you information to help understand the opportunity conservation easements present for your own land or for the benefit of the landowners you work with. To begin with, a conservation easement is a legal agreement which limits some land uses such as residential subdivisions, commercial, and industrial development, but still allows landowners to continue using their land for traditional land uses such as forestry, farming, hunting, and recreation. A conservation easement is a voluntary legal agreement between a landowner and a land trust that restricts some uses to promote conservation values. It is a legal restriction on the use of the land. It limits the development of the property typically to agricultural or forestry uses instead of being developed for urbanization or a Walmart supercenter. The terms of a conservation easement are determined by the landowner and are different for every property based on their desires. First off, the restrictions that you put on your land is totally left up to the owner. No one else dictates that to you. Private property rights are not infringed upon. Many landowners are tree farmers, they are row crop farmers, and they want to continue to manage their land, and so they put that in their easement and they do so into the future. Brad Thompson explains how the conservation easement he placed on his tree farm hasn't impacted his desired use of the property. You know, we still hunt, fish, farm, everything we could do before, uh, but we just, we just can't turn it into multiple subdivisions with multiple homes. We did reserve the right to build you know, one residential structure and uh, we still have woodland roads. And, it's pretty much business as usual. The benefits of placing land in a conservation easement can be both financial and sentimental. Brad, Jimmy, and Wayne all have similar but slightly different reasons for doing it on their own property, and Jen provides an example on how conservation easements can be used to hold on to a family property that may otherwise be lost due to inheritance taxes. My tree farm, I put a conservation easement on in 2007. And uh, my family and I are real pleased that we did it. It hasn't stopped us from doing anything that we were, weren't already doing as far as hunting, fishing, growing timber, agriculture. Um, and we did reserve some rights to build a home or two in the future. Uh, but it, it'll never be developed and we're happy about that knowing that there'll be some green space left for future generations. I grew up in the woods. I became a forester because I like trees, never lost an argument with one, and uh, since my career is on the downside, I'm getting back to the things that I uh, love to do, and I love the forest, and I love the woods, and I love dedicating this time, and I wanted to preserve this legacy in this conservation easement because I won't be here too much longer, maybe 20 years, um, but this property will always be here like this for my grandkids and their kids and, and uh, for future generations in perpetuity. <laughs> and I had never planned to, to use uh, the conservation easement when we were developing the Upper Savannah Land Trust, but 
as I became more involved in the land trust, I, I decided that I wanted to do that with the, the track in Saluda County. And I'm real, real happy I have one child and uh, he's, he's agreeable to it and seems to be proud of it. So I'm, I'm very proud that we have it in the land trust. It gives you a good feeling to know that you've, you're protecting the land from, from development. Uh, the tax incentives were, were appreciated uh, in our family and we've used them and uh, it is a good planning tool. My husband and his two sisters inherited a family farm that had been, the property had been in the family since the 1930s. So over a period of 70 plus years, it of course had greatly appreciated. They chose to place the farm under a conservation easement, reducing their tax burden and they were able to hold on to the family farm. Tax incentives are the main financial benefit to placing land in a conservation easement. Jen explains how these benefits are calculated. The way that those are generally computed is the land is appraised at its highest and best use. So for example, as if it were to be developed. Secondly, once the landowner has decided what uses he or she may want to limit, like how many times it can be subdivided or how many homes that can be built on there, then that property is reappraised. And there's a difference between those, those two values that may qualify for some tax benefits. So let's walk through a quick, very simplified example. Let's take a 100 acre track in Newberry County. If the landowner that owns that property decides to sell it as a subdivision, let's say that land is worth $10,000 an acre. If the land is left as timberland, let's just say for even numbers, the land is worth $5,000 an acre. The difference in the highest and best use and the open land value is $5,000 an acre. So across that 100 acre track, the landowner is basically giving up $500,000 worth of value by leaving that land in timberland. So in this example, the owner of that property is eligible for $500,000 in federal tax deductions, additional state tax credits, and they are able to continue to grow and harvest row crops and timber off of this property, hunt, hike, pass it down to their heirs, or sell it to somebody else who could do the same. This is obviously a very simplified example. Easement value will vary greatly across the state depending on development pressure, land values, and what land uses are restricted in the easement. Jen provides a word of guidance for anyone thinking about an easement. So it's very, very important that any landowner considering a conservation easement reach out to their CPA for formal advice. But the benefits extend beyond just tax incentives or grant payments. In a state that is growing, like the state of South Carolina is, and in an area with um, intense pressures for changing land uses, conservation easements are a tool for land protection that is much, much less expensive per acre than an outright land acquisition. Once that land is protected and continues to be managed over the long term, it can provide additional assurances to the forest products industry and to our partners in agriculture. With the expectation of 1 million acres of forest land lost by 2060, conservation easements will play an important role in ensuring long-term availability of stumpage in South Carolina. If you go back in history, the, the I-85 corridor, for example, through the upstate has lost over 175,000 acres of forest during the past 25 years. These losses are even more significant along the coastal plain. Considering the rapidly changing population demographics along with organizations who oppose harvesting trees, working forest conservation easements maintain sustainable resources for the forest industry. Most land trusts in South Carolina understand the importance of the forest industry to the state and encourage working forest conservation easements to ensure landowners are able to manage their property for timber and the industry has an adequate supply of raw material. I'm on the board member with the Upper Savannah Land Trust and we have over 50,000 acres under conservation easement and probably 90 percent of that 50,000 acres is uh, productive forest land that is managed for timber. So it's a, you know, a locked in guaranteed resource for the future for these companies that won't be lost to urbanization. If you or a landowner you're working with is interested in learning more about conservation easements, the best place to start is the Land Trust Alliance at landtrustalliance.org or the South Carolina Land Trust Network at scltn.org. From there, you can find a local land trust to speak with about your specific property. 
While conservation easements are not for everyone or every property, hopefully this video has explained some of the benefits they can offer. I hope you'll consider this as an option for your property and share the information with other landowners you come in contact with. The quality of life that we enjoy here in South Carolina is directly related to the contributions that landowners, foresters, loggers make. Conservation easements are one way to ensure that that land remains protected and working and gives our children and grandchildren the kind of environment to grow up that we have been so blessed to enjoy.